Thank you for having me tonight. My name is William Briggs. I live on 2405 Mockingbird Street, and um, I live in the Burr Town community. There's a proposed plan for 100,000 solar panels on a seat away from my doorstep. This is where I lay my head down at night. This is where my 11 son year old goes out and play and my five-year-old daughter. We're deeply concerned about the impact these solar panels can have to our future health. As I said, solar panels are dipped and made with cadmium, arsenic, mercury, and other toxic materials. In fact, China produces these, uh, these panels because their laws are relaxed there. They're considered toxic waste by the state of California, and they're not accepted in landfills. They have to be recycled at special facilities or shipped overseas if broken or if they, at the end of their life cycle. There are no studies that state solar panels don't cause cancer, but we do know solar panels contain cancer-causing materials such as cadmium that was just spoken about. Now, Innovative Solar provided a workshop, or the, the Commission Board provided a workshop, and we had an environmental specialist come to tell us about it, and he used words like probably not and highly unlikely that it would affect the surrounding areas. I can't state the health of my children on words such as that. For me and my family, it's solar panels come. We'll be kicked out of our community. We'll leave. And we have invested 15 years of our life there. We know a few things about innovative solar. They do take soil samples before construction, but they do not take soil samples afterwards at any of the facilities they have currently. They have not done their own studies to see the side effects of the surrounding areas after constructions of their solar power plants. We have found out solar panel, Innovative Solar comes on site, they set up the site, and they find investors, and they get, us, get out as fast as possible. That is their business plan. You can go on their website, you can see it. That is how they go about their business. They do not invest or build up their community, nor do they have incentive to think about the surrounding areas that these solar power plants are built. Innovative Solar wants as little responsibility as possible, especially at the end of the life cycle of a solar power plant. Tonight I'm here to show you part of the toxicology report that's inside of these solar panels. Cadmium. Cadmium is related to breast, lung, and prostate cancer. It can cause kidney le lesions and an endocrine disruptor. <coughs> a second one is mercury. And by the way, this was pre presented by a PhD of uh, Brooks McPhail. Uh, mercury causes kidney damage. It's associated with an autoimmune disease. It's an endocrine disruptor. It deteriorates the nervous system. It impairs hearing, speech, vision, causes gout, causes involuntary muscle movements. It corrodes the skin and muscle mucous membranes. It causes chewing and swallowing to become difficult. Arsenic's the third one, which is related to the pulmonary disease, lung cancer, bronchitis, laryngitis, and it's another endocrine disruptor. I didn't know what the word endocrine disruptor was, so I looked it up. It's a chemical that at certain doses that can interfere with your systems. It can cause cancers, tumors, birth defects, and other disorders, developmental disorders. What's in those toxicology reports is the reason I'll never be around a solar panel field. If you want to have one or two in your house, that's a personal decision. But a hundred thousand, when I walk out my door, 180 views, that's what I see. 
in a few days, we're going to have Hurricane Matthew. It may come in, I hope it goes out to sea. But if it comes in, and those solar panels are up, well, all of a sudden, I'm going to be worried about hell, wind, <coughs> rain blowing sideways, the tornadoes that come with it. It's just too close to the people that live near. They say these panels are sealed. I don't know if they can stand up to Mother Nature. Mother Nature is very abusive. We're talking for over 20 years of Mother Nature. We need to update our ordinances and make sure these companies are doing their due diligence and protecting our lands and our community. We need testing of soil and air on a regular basis. If these panels are broken, they need to be replaced and do require testing and make sure the public are known about it. I shared this in a previous meeting I want to share with y'all. It's a request. on some ordinance that may be coming up. And what we're asking is a moratorium on all existing and future solar panels until we can understand better, be educated better, and have better ordinances in place to protect the communities. One thing I want to recommend, and, and here's where we at, to us, where I live at, I'm under the gun. As far as I know, if Inflator Solar comes and fills out that application, they may get their permit. I'm looking to y'all to say, hey, we're going to stop this until we have more information, we're educated, and have the things we need in place. Please give me that assurance, if you can, as we go forward. We need a detailed decommission plan. I've been through several of the planning commissions. I've heard a couple different solar farms come in with their plans. We need a good template. We need one that lays out what should be done and how it should be taken care of. We need a bond that completes, that is the complete cost of decommission. The setbacks for the solar panels, we'd like it to be a thousand feet from the owner's property line. And if it wants to be a little closer, the adjoining landowner agrees to it, so be it. Solar panels should be only 80% height of the buffer. These are 14 foot solar panels. We want 16 foot buffers and we want it day one. We don't want to look at them for three to five years and wait till they grow in. We think there should be retention ponds on these lands. We don't want the water flowing in to our property land. They should be able to be responsible for it. They talked about firefighters. We think there should be training. I'd be paid by these solar panel people about how to fight these solar panels when it happens. The chemicals used should be communicated to the public for whatever maintenance they have. And right now, the current order says there should be a 40-foot buffer if there's a water. We, should, we believe it should be 500 feet. And all property owners should be notified at least a quarter of a mile when these uh, applications are entered to help communicate to the, to, the, to the community better. I appreciate your time today and listening to our concerns. Thank you.